Hello folks, we're going to go over how to document your work for your portfolios today. This is step one of four, and this is just about how to get ready and know what you need to take and where you need to take the pictures. So you've got some choices on which device you want to use. You can use the classroom camera, the Canon PowerShot, um, or you can use your phone or your iPod. Um, Android or iPhone works fine. I'll show you how to upload those pictures later, but know that the only reason you should have your phones out is for classroom use. It's really just to take pictures of your work, not each other, of your work and work on your portfolios. Everything else is prohibited by the school and my classroom policy. So please keep yourself out of trouble and make life easier for me too. So how to operate the class camera if you opt to use that. Um, first of all you do have to turn on the camera. So there's a little button on the top there. That's the power button, and then the startup screen should appear. Um, there is a screen on the back of the camera. Just take a look at that. Set it on auto. Generally speaking, it should just be on there, but you always want to check and make sure. And then compose the shot. Oops, sorry about that. Um, compose the shot. Um, you may be able to just zoom in and zoom out at your um, pieces of pottery, or you may actually move closer and further away. Um, so whichever is going to work best for you. However, if you're trying to take detail shots, generally you actually just have to get closer. Trying to zoom in on detail will just make it blurry. And then to actually take the picture, you're going to press down on the, the shutter button, press down part way just lightly. That will focus, it'll beep twice and then press down the rest of the way and that will actually take the picture. If you just press down a lot of times the pictures are going to be blurry. What should be photographed? Pretty much everything you you actually work on. All of your work um, and sometimes we'll have um, due dates coming up for portfolio submissions and you should take pictures of anything you've been working on. Anything that has not been documented since the last time you turned in your portfolio. So it may be things in progress. It may only be half finished or not even that. But take a picture of it. You can always get rid of that picture later when you've got more to show me. Um, but those in progress pictures are really important when you have a portfolio due. And definitely take them before you glaze. If you have all of your construction done, and it is best before you get them bisquired just in case something goes wrong in the kiln. Very rarely some things explode, or some other things can happen to pieces. Uh, maybe somebody picked it up or bumped it, or any number of things can happen. This way you at least have it documented. It doesn't make it um, unbroken. It doesn't make it um, unshattered, but at least you still get the credit for your piece. And then after it's glazed fire, before you take it home, you should get your pictures taken of your pottery. Um, also make sure that you talk to me about your pieces and let us discuss those and um, the strengths and the weaknesses or the things that you need to work on for your next piece. Discuss it with me before you take it home. Where should your photos be taken? Um, you can take them at your desk or on the counter if they're unfired. And here's a little video about that. Photographs of unglazed pieces should not be taken on the backdrop, on the infinity screen. But they should be taken somewhere that you can really see what's going on. This is a good example of where not to take it. With the light behind it, everything just goes into shadow and you really can't see very much. Um, so this is probably not the best location. Instead, you can take it at your desk. Um, try to kind of isolate the pieces that you are taking pictures of. Um, I'll try and have some backdrops for you as well. And instead of taking it in front of the window. While a tad cluttered with all the chairs and everything, this actually is an okay place to take your pictures of the in-progress. This is just so that you can document your work, show me what it is you're working on, um, and kind of document your time usage. So you can see this works much better than against the, uh, the window because, again, that backlighting completely hid everything. You just threw it all into shadow. Um, but you want to make sure that you take a picture at this stage of anything that you're needing credit for um, in case I've forgotten something. So if you're needing you know, a lid 
credit, make sure you take a picture of the, the gallery or the seat, um, take a picture of the bottom of the lid, take a picture of the, the bottom of the pot, any detail areas that you want to make sure that I see. Um, so really document that because then that's going to help me evaluate your pot and it's also going to help remind you what kind of things you need to talk about in your self-evaluation. Okay, so that the, that's how you do the pictures that are unglazed, that have not been glazed fired. But you also need to take pictures of pieces that have been glazed fired. And those you should take on the infinity screen over in the photo booth um, up in the front of the classroom. And this is that video. Hey folks, this is where you should be taking pictures of any work that has been glazed fired, only work that has been glazed fired. There should be no work that is not glazed fired. That's, that's a no. The reason being, um, it does not really benefit from this background. And a lot of times there's dirt and crust, and then you end up either leaving stuff on the white sheet or on the infinity screen, which we'll talk about here in just a second. So again, unglazed work, unfired work, no, only glazed fired work. So. This is, like I said, the backdrop for that. And when you're thinking about what you're taking here, again, I cannot repeat on that. Only glaze work. So you probably get the idea that you should only take pictures of glaze fired work there. And that would be true. Now, in the next video, we will cover how to actually set up those shots, take pictures using the infinity screen, and why the infinity screen is helpful. But that's it for this one.